Authorities say Jeff Shepard was last seen at Missy's Bar in Winfield, Tennessee. You know, normally a person goes missing their fight with a girlfriend, they may take off for a day or two. She was at the garage the next morning, wondering where he's at. His truck, a gray Ford F-150 with a brown driver's side door and a red passenger's side door, is also missing. It's one thing for a person to miss it, you know, pretty hard to find. Find a, a person in a truck, yeah. I don't know if it's foul play, there's something went on, most likely. We come home from the hospital the day he went missing. But he showed his mom a picture of my daughter, and he's like, look, you know, I can't wait to go meet her. And he never got that chance. So every milestone that my daughter hits, every month older she turns, it's just a constant. He's not there. He's not there to see that. I mean, it's just really hard because, you know, you try to focus on the milestones your daughter's reaching, but then it's in the back of your head. Like, you know, he was looking forward to seeing this. Yeah. And he's not here. Josh, her husband, Jeff's brother, I mean, he's super supportive of all of our shenanigans. Like, no matter how crazy a lead may be, he's either like, okay, be careful, or I'm going with you, and don't, don't you dare go until I get off, you know, just to make sure we're safe. I believe he's kind of accepted the fact that he's not coming home, but he don't want to just flat out say it without the proof being there. Me and Jeff growing up, most of the time we'd either fight or feud or something, you know what I mean? He, yeah. he liked hunting and fishing, I liked working on cars, so we was just two polar opposites. Right. But once he got older, he went into that bar crowd. It kind of separated us right there. And you know what time he did come around, you know, yeah. what, 10, 15 minutes we was arguing. But at the end of the day, he's your brother. You that's know. my brother, and yeah. you know, that's the only one I got. Right. Anything you guys have gotten into that's been like super sketch? Everything. Everything. <laughs> So Jeff's cell phone is also missing, which I'm 99.9% .9 sure that I found that at the bar in the Lawson Found Box. We gave it to the state police. Her ex-boyfriend has Jeff's phone number now. He is also the same boyfriend, ex-boyfriend that was at the bar that night or a couple of nights before then. And she, he was making comments like, I'll make him disappear if you want me to. He went missing about 10 o'clock at Then pictures took about eight. So they was running back and forth bar hopping is what they was doing. Okay. They was going one bar to the next bar. Could things have escalated that night with that guy? Like I said, it's a mystery. I yeah. have no has, clue Has why. that guy been questioned or? Yeah, police talked to him. They went and, you know, done the <laughs> search warrants here and there. Sure. Nothing's come up. There's something went on, most likely. All right, so there's Jared with the search team RV, and we've got Jeremy. Hi! About three years. I mean, three years, yeah. Somebody just vanishes, and people, you know, that's that's still fresh. I mean, this dude wasn't old. They would definitely like to know where he went. You know, he was loved in this community. So there's four or five different uh, lakes on the shooting range, and I'm actually gonna throw up a little aerial view of all the bodies of water, but this was a very sentimental place for him to go, and we know that we can search all these different areas and hopefully clear all these different areas, and I think Jared just actually got permission for us to go in there and search, so that's a good sign. It's, do you often run into <laughs> cases like that a lot where all these properties are like private access and you have to- Oh, 100%. All the time. Um, you know, there's been several that we have solved now where they were located on private property. Where would you go if you were going to? Oh, well, this property. This property. Well, who owns that property? Oh, well, that's, you know, that's, Dwayne and Trevor. Trevor's yeah. doing the building up there. You know, he's the son. You know, Dwayne's the dad. Go track Trevor down. It's, do you often run into <laughs> cases like that a lot where all these properties are like private access and you have to- Oh, 100%. All the time. Um, you know, there's been several that we have solved now where they were located on private property. Wow. And also private property where say, you know what? It's already been searched. 
but okay, go ahead and, you know, go ahead and search it again. Search it again. And then I, I know even like those times too, where you've like searched places again, you've like, you, I mean, it's so easy to miss like little small spots and you come back to these places and it's just like, you know, they're right there. Oh. Yeah. You, the you know, and the thing is, is we always say until we've searched it and we put eyes on it, mm -hmm. we don't consider it search and clear. We are actually, I, I don't know what this location is, if it's a construction site, if they're building something, I'm not sure, but there's multiple areas of water. And right behind me here, I know that there is a quarry and we're gonna be sonaring. We've got a bunch of people that are gonna be on boats. This is the closest water to the, is it the bar? Kinda, yeah. yeah. And to the girlfriend's house. So it's like, so. It's like, first spot that should be a first spot that should be checked for sure. They mentioned that this was a really special spot for them because they used to come out here and shoot guns all the time. And there are multiple bodies of water on this property. Anytime there's a deep body of water and a road leading to it, there's a chance for us to find something. So let's keep on walking. We're looking for that, like that off chance that there was a road that came back here. And we're also looking for like broken tree limbs from two years ago, anywhere where he might've gone off into the deep quarry knowing this is back here. This road has been here. If you look on the map here, okay, this comes back in here underneath the foliage because then it's going to go into this intersection. And then is that intersection going to drop down? We don't know. We don't go. So this is where we're at. So we're at the chicken farm. Yeah. Come up past it and come over here that we're going to be connecting with. It actually drives right up top. All right. That's where we need to get to. That's where we're at right now. Okay. You have an incredible no trespassing sign, but great news is you've got permission to be here. That's what we're looking for here is, is it going to be deep enough for a vehicle to have made its way up here and hide it? If you were a betting man. 100% no on this one. I, I, I agree with you, but However, okay. there, there's an oil slick right here. Well, here's the thing. In order to identify, just let's just move down to another part of the pond there. If this is consistent all the way around the pond, it's not a vehicle. It's, it's not normal, but we are, in old strip mine, rock quarry, whatever this used to be, that is toxic, potentially. So, yeah, that could be it. Could, could not. Boat ramp right there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, near his his home. Yeah, that's about six miles, seven miles from oh, his house. Hundred percent makes perfect sense as well. If it's only six miles from his house, and that's north of town, right? Uh, south of town. Okay. So I guess right now we're heading to. Jacob. Let's meet up with Jacob at the reservoir that's six miles from where Jeff was actually lived. Okay. Which perfect. is going to be the next logical location to go check now. It doesn't become viable for us to just close our eyes and throw a dart in hopes of, you know, when we come into it, we come into it very strategically mm -hmm. as to, all right, here's where he was last seen. Here's where he lived. Here's where his girlfriend lived. Here's where he worked. Now we start triangulating all this. You know, just learning all the different tips and tricks from you and learning all the knowledge that you have to offer with these different cold cases that you're working into, it's really amazing to learn. So no cars? Uh, we didn't though. see anything that stood out as a car. So I think, Sorry, Doug. I, I'm saying the spot's clear, but we're gonna let the expert. Oh my God. So the plan is we're gonna meet up with uh, Jacob from the channel Chaos Divers and he's been searching an area over here that we're gonna take a look at and I think, I may be wrong, but I think we might be breaking out the sonar with Jeremy. Hmm, maybe. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe that worked. What? Well, we're tough. I thought it works. <laughs> yeah. It's our second time this week, so I'm gonna pull this out of something. Oh my god. <laughs> They're gonna be looking right now. This is our one of our last locations that we're gonna be searching today, but hopefully uh, throughout all this we'll be able to find any cars or trucks or anything that may be missing in here. So what's scary is, is I'm relying on Jeremy to make sure that I don't fall in. Because if Jeremy stops this, I'm going completely in. It's pretty impressive that I would fit 
three people. Yeah. Or more. They're trying to do something right now. I can't tell what they're doing. Oh, there's a bunch of trash, you know? Oh, look at that. We can take that. All right, we're gonna run this past, so we'll be back. I can do it. <laughs> All right, I am not complaining. Don't, just chill. Wait, wait. Baby steps. I got it. Oh. Oh. Yeah. You. Yeah, there we go. Right. Welcome. Welcome. How's it going? Pretty good. I feel so much safer in this boat than Nug's boat. I'm hoping that Jared sees something over here on the sonar. We're gonna be right before this gray tower over here is where the boat ramp's gonna be. So they're saying right now it's uh, 36 feet right here. You can see right here we're coming across the boat ramp. And this is gonna be another section that they are scanning. Sonar overview for uh, Brits viewers. This is a live scope, so anything that's happening here is happening in real time. You can see in uh, this grid, the grids are always gonna change based upon the depth. So if you see a fish swim by, it's happening in real time. 13 feet is where we're at. So this one is our down imaging. Anything that's black is water columns. So if you look at the graph here, that's going to match your depth. Right here, this is the side scan. We're casting 75 feet to the left, 75 feet to the right. Anything that's black is water columns. You can see we're at 12 feet. You can see that we're tw uh, you know, 12 feet roughly right here. So as we head out here, you see how it's getting deeper and it's getting deeper and it's getting deeper. And so that's how you read side scan, down imaging, and live scope will adjust automatically. See that bubbling over there? What, where, oh, oh my gosh. What is that? Oh, I see it, yeah. It is a boat. Outboard on it. John boat with an outboard. Yeah, but you can see it. Oh my gosh, you can clearly see that right there. If you look at that, you see the, uh, on the left, the 10 foot mark. Yes. And then on the right, it's right between the five and 10, so the boat is roughly 17 foot long. Gosh, that's crazy. You can see the motor and everything. That's a boat? Yeah. It's a boat, yep. Yeah. All right, since that didn't work out too well, we're headed back. All right, so we are about to get back to the dock and call it a day. Wow. I mean, like the sheriff's partner around here in state police, they've tried everything they can do to think of, but the problem is if you don't have no place to know to go look, it's hard to get them to just go out, you know what I mean? Everywhere they've got other cases. We're in one you know of the mean? most rural parts of the country. And this place yeah. is a nightmare to try to find something like that because right. there's just so much territory and most of it's wooded. It changes quick. Okay. A truck might be here today and it may be 15 miles down the river. Well, we find that normally once they go in and they settle in, they don't move. They don't, you know, once they're there, they're there. there. Something it's, catches it's, it's like a turtle on the bottom, you know, it just sets right in. Sediment starts packing up and holds it. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say that truck either either got dismantled and sold piece by piece or something. Right. That's what would be my guess on it for that truck not to surface. It's one thing for a person to miss it, you know, pretty hard to find. Find a, a person and a truck. Yeah. I really do appreciate y'all for coming out and everything you've done. Absolutely. Thanks for sharing your story. We'll try to keep going. We'll keep, keep looking. That's all we can do. I don't know. I really don't know what we're doing, but you gotta keep trying. That's all you can do, keep faith. What I was really hoping for today is like, clean cut, there he is, not an accident, or the end. That's kind of where it was leaning. I mean, after we talked to, I forget his name. Josh was Josh, and that was his brother. 
brother. Yeah. Wow. Just oh my goodness. Down at the very end. That's amazing. So I guess he knew that we were down there and just kind of came. So Amelia that we had, she was wearing the pink today. Oh, okay. So that was her husband. Her husband. That one. Thank you so much, Jared. I really want to thank you for all the knowledge that you shared with us. And if you enjoyed the video today, don't forget to press that like button. Subscribe if you're new. Check out Jared's channel, Adventures with Purpose. I'm sure you already are. But with that said, we'll see you guys on the next episode. Frog part of the uh, outro? Yes. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> all right. So, day one of searching with Adventures with Purpose comes to a close. <laughs> all right. You need an outro for real. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs>